It's been a very interesting lending market these past couple years with a lot of people refinancing, interest rates are low. And I'm sitting here with Casey Moore with Prudential Mortgage Capital. Casey, what kinds of loans are you focusing on now these days at Prudential? PMCC is primarily focused on the permanent side. We're doing um, Fannie Freddie, and then we have the general account, which is the life company. And then we also have an interim um, bucket of, of funds for those who want to do acquisitions, quasi-turnaround type product. Are you seeing different kinds of borrowers today than perhaps maybe five years ago? You, I know you've been in the business for uh, 25 plus years. You know, we really are. There's, we still have our core group of institutional customers who like the general account and who like Fannie and Freddie, and they're the largers, um, larger players. But because the REITs have been so active, we've been going down to smaller regional local operators who have experience but who want to grow their business and we've been working with them to facilitate that sort of company growth, you know, whether they monetize and ultimately get bought out by REITs again at a later stage is we're not so concerned about, but that's where we're finding the, the activity is. So I was going to ask you, what, you know, if you have a profile of a typical customer in terms of size of company, what would that be today? I would say anywhere from probably two to Ten properties. Okay, so that's right. going out to the middle market. That's the middle market, right? And again, we're not trying to ignore. We're not ignoring our larger institutional clients because they're our bread and butter. But we're just seeing less activity from them. Right, and then the growth is going to be in the smaller properties. Right. How about typical size and structure of one of your loans? <clears throat> On the agency side, we're seeing more one-off transactions, so that's leading to smaller loan size. So you know, five to Fifteen million dollars. Um, people are still going with the ten-year term with Fannie and Freddie for the most part, but I have been seeing some people expressing interest in longer term. They're recognizing the rates are good, and that why take on the bullet risk if you don't have to? Right, right. And you know, so many people for several years now have been kind of enamored with a low, low, low LIBOR rate, and they love that low spread, which has been going down also. But are they more and more thinking of locking in? It is very attractive, and they have to pay more for fixed rate. But are people thinking more about locking in as opposed to doing that low LIBOR-based loan? There's, there's a, an interesting discussion going on. I have clients who really enjoy the low LIBOR premium because it's just cash flow to the bottom line. But there's a recognition that rates are going to go up. But I had a conversation with a client this morning. I said, you know, we know rates are going to go up, and they said, well, we've been saying that for three years. So at what point do you, you know, are you leaving money on the table? But I think there is a general recognition. I've been seeing more clients say to me, you know what, whether it's HUD, the general account, Fannie or Freddie, these rates are really good. I don't want the interest rate risk in 10 years, the refi risk in 10 years. I'm just going to lock these up now. And interestingly, we're seeing a lot of the uh, larger REITs uh, doing some 30-year bond deals, right? Because they want to, even though it's higher rate, they want to lock in. They want to lock in their 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 uh, right hand side of their balance sheet. And speaking of balance sheets, Prudential has a huge balance sheet. Are you tapping into some of that for some longer-term fixed rate debt on the senior housing side? Yeah, we're using the general account in two ways. The, the general account largely services the permanent side, and it likes the senior space a lot. It's generally lower leverage, larger metropolitan areas. But, for example, we did a, a large portfolio last year, about $200 million on the general account. Um, the second bucket we will use, it's more interim debt. So two- to three-year debt for turnaround, acquisition type stuff, type properties that are ultimately going to go to Fannie, Freddie, HUD, uh, or the general account. The classic short-term bridge. Right. 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 Okay. Good. Right. And you, you've been in this sector for quite a while. Don't want to talk about your age or anything. <laughs> but uh, you know, you've been doing this for a long time. What's what's changed the most in the market from a lender's perspective? I think I thought about that a lot, and there are two things. There's first on the financing side, the landscape with the REIT activity has really made the debt side very, very different. The, and the, the pie hasn't gotten all that much bigger, but the REITs are, are so active, and they're going down 
into the, the small regional operator world too. Mm -hmm. So that's made a lot a lot of difference. Um, the other thing that I've seen, and this isn't so much debt, it's just sort of industry, is that our operators, I think, are doing a really good job of adjusting their models to meet the needs of today's seniors. So today's, today's memory care building, for example, is nothing like the building of 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's pretty exciting for, for a lender, an equity player, a REIT. Um, so those would, I would say, be the big changes that I've seen over 20 plus years. Yeah, and of course you want, you want to lend on this more of a state-of-the-art type right. property. versus and the older property. Versus the older property. Right. 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 And finally, what's, uh, what's Prudential's pipeline looking, looking like for 2013? Do you think it's going to be similar to 12 or, a bit, or more active than 2012? We had a really good year in 2012, and the goal is to to try and achieve similar results. I don't think we're going to get beyond that just because 2012 was so strong. And we've, we've hired a few new originators, so we're looking at building up the HUD platform in particular, which will add, add volume, which will be good. Um, so I would say we're probably, our goal is to meet last year's volume um, results. And we'll be happy with that because it was yeah. such a good year. Such a good year. Yeah. Well, good. Well, I uh, hope you do that, and uh, and good luck with credential. Thank you very much. Right. Nice Thank talking. Thanks for joining me.